Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Tech with Alan Spadra. In this video, I'll walk you through how to use Laravel Telescope, which is an elegant debugging assistance tool that provides complete read time insight to different parts of a Laravel application, such as requests, exceptions, queries, jobs, etc. It can be used to monitor the development of the application. Let's get started. So for you to be able to use Telescope in a Laravel 11 application, you have to basically install it using the Composer command. So you say Composer require Laravel slash Telescope in any terminal of your choice where um, the Laravel application is being opened. And now for local installation, probably you want to use it on your local um, development environment. So you could just do dash dash dev. You could use the dev flag to install it locally. So I will just go ahead to install um, the Telescope so I could show you how it works. Yeah, so after installing the Laravel Telescope package, the next is to publish the Telescope assets using the Telescope install artisan command. So I'll say PHP artisan Telescope install, 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 then Press enter. Okay, so next you execute the migration command to create the database tables needed for Laravel Telescope. So just do at PHP artisan migrate. This will create the necessary files and prepare your database for telescope tracking. Okay, finally, you should also prevent the telescope package from being auto discovered by adding the following to your composer.json file. So you head over to the composer.json file and then, you know, just um, over here. So you could see here. From line 56 to 59 you just say laravel don't discover laravel telescope next let's look at the telescope configurations the telescope configuration can be found in the telescope.php under the config folder so first is that when you go to your browser and then you visit slash telescope it will take you to the telescope page probably you want to use another name because most persons know that slash telescope will take them to um, the telescope page if you have it installed on your application. So probably you want to rename it to something else. Probably you say maybe monitor you get. So it will not be slash monitor. So you can change the telescope parts and then you can indicate the domain. And then if you want to disable it, you can change it to false. So um, telescope will not be enabled on your application. So it will not lock any entry of what is happening in your application. So you can indicate the telescope driver. Okay, so for here, by default, it's on database, you can indicate something else. Okay, so for production, when you're about to push to production, you don't want to enable this because it's going to be logging the entries of what is happening in your application. To disable telescope data collection entirely, you can turn this to false, like I said just now. But you can also do that in the EMV. So you can define this. You can come to EMV, for example, and then you can come here and then you know, just define, you can say false here. So that's just same as what we just did in the telescope.php config file. So if you intend to use telescope in production, you can actually add a couple of emails here just to ensure that not everyone have access to the telescope dashboard on non-local environments. When it comes to entries, there are different methods that can be used. For example, um, this filter basically um, is a closure that records individual entries. So it will just Either it will record this or this or this, so it just checks uh, which one is true and then which was the, which one was defined. So if I comment this, for example, it will not report exception. If I comment this, it will not report failed request. If I comment this, it will not report failed job. So to just filter individual entries that are recorded by telescope. But then you could do it in batches. So the filter batch method may be used to filter all data for a given request or console command. All entries will be captured by telescope if the closure returns true. So I can have filter batch here. So if all of this is true, it's good, just going to log all of the entries that are here. But then basically this filter is just what is there by default. Now you have what we call tagging. So you can do tagging here, for example. And so search can be performed on telescope entries by using the tag. They automatically they are automatically added by telescope but you can create custom tags just like i did now the next is watchers so watchers collect application data when a request or command is executed the watchers registered in a telescope config file might be cumbersome for a project so if you head over to telescope and then you scroll down you could see this is what we call watchers so this is a batch watcher this is a catch watcher so this watches for everything related to catch 
this is a client request watcher this is a command watcher anytime a command is being executed this watcher will actually be executed also this is a dump watcher so if you come to the web here i have something called dump here so that watches all over anything that has to do with dump then this is event watcher this is exception watcher so whichever one you don't need in an application all you need to do is to comment it because this could be cumbersome for an application imagine for example i'm not using batch watcher i'm not using the catch watcher i'm not using client request watcher so i could just um, comment all of this and then they will not be available in a moment i'll show you probably let's say uh which one will i not be doing now so let me just comment gateway watcher and then so when i'm doing the demo i would show you that that gateway watcher is not available so you have notification watcher you have query watcher so let me just walk over it what they do in a moment yeah you can comment any of this watcher if you don't want Laravel Telescope to actually record entries when they have been executed or if you don't need them in your application. These watchers actually they do different kind of things. So for batcher, for batch watcher, it logs application data about queued batches. For catch watcher, it actually logs data whenever a catch key is assessed, missed, modified, or deleted. You know, there is the catch. Um, you can if you want to catch data in Laravel. So this will actually be triggered if it is accessed, missed, modified, or deleted. So you have the command watcher. So the command watcher logs the argument options, exit code and attribute each time an artisan command is executed. So I will just do, so I will execute a command here so that when we go over to the browser, you would see it. So let me say PHP artisan. Okay, I think there is a console here. So let me just copy this PHP artisan inspire so i'm going to show you when we access the telescope dashboard you will see that this command was recorded now the next is you have you have the dump watcher so if we if i comment this out now and i access the index root of if i access this routes it's going to log this in the um, telescope provider and then the next you have event watcher event watcher logs the payload listeners and broadcast details for all events triggered by the application so this is the event watcher so if you don't want to if you are not dealing with events you can actually comment this out and then next you have the exception watcher when there is an exception so it logs the details and stack trace of any reportable exception thrown by your application then you have the job watcher you have the gate watcher so the gate watcher logs data and result of gate and policy checks by the application then you have the job watcher, so this is the job watcher. What it does is it logs the and status of any jobs dispatched by your application. So but this um, this one is quite important. So the client request watcher, it logs all the requests made by the application. Then you have mail watcher, it logs all the mail executed in the application. So you can turn it to be false. And then so it will not log any entry. So you have the model watcher. You have the model watcher. What the model watcher does is that it logs changes to models whenever an eloquent model event is triggered. You can specify which model events to track using the watcher's event option. So you see this is the event, so you can define. So this is like saying all of the eloquent that will be executed, just keep watch over them. So where you can define which one that will be, what maybe store or update, you can um, define them here. So you could do created, maybe eloquent does created, and then eloquent dot updated. So it will only log data for only those two that when you define them in this um, event so the next you have notification watcher so when i execute them on the browser now you're going to see how they work so um let me look for notification now yeah so this is notification watcher so it logs all notifications sent by the application then you have query watcher it logs all the query so it logs the rock sql bindings and execution time for every query executed by the application then you have redis and then you have request watcher this is the request watcher so the request logs the request details header session and response data for all requests processed by the application you can actually comment this out if you don't need it then you have the schedule watcher it logs the command and attribute of all scheduled tasks executed by your application then you have the view watcher so you know like a view in the resources folder so it logs the view the name the past the data and composers utilized during the rendering of views so let's head over to the browser to demo how telescope works okay so this is what the laravel telescope dashboard looks like so you can pause 
recording you can delete entries you can auto load entries then you can actually um, monitor what is happening so basically like i showed you there are different uh, watchers so this is requested it will log all the entries about request then this is commands watcher to log all the entries about command so you could see like i executed the command inspire so you actually um log that entry about the command that was um, executed so there is schedule um the schedule watcher that i just explained there's the jobs it logs entries about jobs there's patches there's catch now like i said in the telescope.php config file if you don't want any of this watcher to be executed in your Laravel application you can actually comment it so i commented gates if you come to gates you will see it says this watcher is turned off so anyone you comment is going to be turned off so no entries about gates will be locked by Laravel Telescope or will be recorded by Laravel Telescope. So you have HTTP client, you have logs, you have mail, you have models. Now, when I come to the models, you could see a user was retrieved, a post was retrieved six minutes ago. So when you come to queries, for example, it will show you, look at the queries now. This took a lot of time. This is 0.82 ms milliseconds. This is 1.0 milliseconds. And then these are quick, way faster, but this actually takes a lot of time. You could use this arrow to view more details about a particular query. Then if you come to um, notifications, you will see notifications about the application. So you come to request. So I'll just head over to the application to do something. So let's say login. So it brings you to the login page. Then when you come over here to refresh, for example, you see that login has been accessed. So you see how long it takes to load it. So what you see, I remember I mentioned about a watcher called view watcher that keeps track of what is happening about the view. So if you come down here and you click views, you could see layouts.app, order login, layouts master, welcome, www.php. So this will show you all of the um, views that were accessed whenever if whenever the application is being executed. So you can still use this um, arrow sign here to just view more details about a particular view. So I'll head over to um, register, for example, and then I just want to just try something so that you could see what mail looks like. So you could see now, it says, before proceeding, please check your email for a verification link. If you do not receive the email, click here to request another. So I just recorded this. So if you come to, for example, if you come to mail, you'll see what it looks like. So you could see that this application has sent a mail. You can click here to view more details about the mail. This is the mailable class that was executed. If you come to queries, you see that more queries have been performed. So you could monitor which queries take much time. And then if you come to models, you will see how many models have been accessed. So if you come to exceptions, if there are errors, you come to this exception, you will see all of the errors that are being thrown by the application. Then if you come to mail, you see um, the mail that was sent. I showed you initially there is the notification. You see that a particular user was being notified. So this is basically what Laravel Telescope looks like. Really way, way important a tool for Laravel developers to use when they are developing an application, especially for the queries. You can use it to monitor the performance of any part of any query you are actually executing within the Laravel application to make it better to optimize it. So let me know what you think about Laravel Telescope in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video. Click the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel. And if you have a community where you know this will be helpful, can you share the video with your community or your cycle? Until next time, bye.